Hey everyone! So in today's video, I'm going to take you around the garden and show you some of the issues that I'm already starting to notice on my plants. And I want to do this for a few reasons. Um, one, because I don't want to only show when things are going great and perfectly in the garden because that is not at all reality. And another selfish reason is I would love to get some help on some of these issues as well. Um, so I'll show you what I'm seeing, I'll tell you what I'm doing about them, but I always find that trying to, at least for me, figure out what the issue is with a plant is very confusing when I'm starting to do some research online. So typically what I'll do is I'll obviously search for whatever it looks like. Sometimes I'll do Google image search, take a picture of like the leaf or the plant, but I feel like the results can always be a lot and they might even be saying completely different things. So as I'm going around, if you have dealt with any of these issues before, or if you see something and you know what it is and you've experienced it, I would love to get some feedback down below. And then at the end, I'll show you some of the products that I'm using as well, because what I want to do is attempt to be as preventative as possible with these issues, because that is definitely something I have not done in the past. Usually I will start treating the problem after it's already there. I would love to treat before it's actually an issue. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will take you around, I'll show you what I'm dealing with, talk to you a little bit about what I've been able to find online, um, and then show you what I'm doing about it. But again, if you've dealt with any of these before and you have experience, please let me know in the comments below and then hopefully we can all help each other out. So let's go take a look at the garden. I'm going to start over here with the decorative dahlias, but also getting our first nasturtium flower, which is very exciting. But here is what I'm noticing. So the dahlias in here are the smaller decorative dahlias. These are the larger dinner plate. These all, at least so far, are doing well. But here is what I'm seeing on this plant. So you can see that in the sun, there is yellowing of the leaves and it's a little bit different on some of the leaves. So this one looks more spotted all over. This one, it's the veins that are actually turning yellow. The rest of it is staying green. And that's kind of what I think most of them look like. So from what I've been able to find online, either it might be some sort of fungal issue. I do check for pests and I don't see any pests really on any of the plants yet. Um, or it could just be a nutrient issue. So nutrient deficiency because we've been having so much rain here. So from what I've been seeing online, like I said, is that it might be a nutrient deficiency because we've been having so much rain. It's been very humid here. It's been very rainy. And the days in between when it's not raining, I say we've been getting rain about every other day, but the days in between, it's not really warm enough or hot enough for everything to evaporate or really dry in between the periods of rain. So like, for example, I haven't turned on my drip system at all, I think since I set it up. Um, and I am a bit nervous because I know I lost a lot of plants in the spring to root rot from all of the water. So I'm hoping mother nature cooperates a little bit, but obviously in a container garden, you're losing nutrients faster than you would in the ground because the containers are just a little bit smaller. Now, when I was reading about it, some of the signs of nutrient deficiency it said were the yellowing of the leaves, also that they were more flimsy, which these definitely feel more flimsy than the ones up here that are green, and that the leaves at the bottom will yellow first before the ones at the top. So that's kind of why I'm heading towards that as a possible issue, but again this is the one that's kind of stumping me the most, so let me know. Um, what I've done for this is just try to put more nutrients into the soil, and I'm realizing that I have a lot of water-soluble fertilizer, not a lot of granular fertilizer. And even though I was reading that liquid fertilizer can be absorbed within 24 hours into the plant, which that's about the time that we have in between rain, I don't want to add more water to the root system because I don't want the roots to rot. So I have been adding granular fertilizer. I'll show you which one I'm using, but I definitely need to get more. So that's what's happening with the dahlia. Uh, let me go show you what I've been noticing next. Coming over here to this eggplant, I think I've shown this before, but this is one where something has been nibbling. And I haven't been able to actually spot anything just by looking underneath the leaves, but I have gone ahead and started applying the Captain Jack's dead bug rue to this. Um, I'm on a weekly application basis right now. But again, like I said, I can't see any actual pests on the leaves. 
I don't know exactly what it is, but at least with that, I've been applying the Captain Jacks and we'll see how that does. By the way, I want to mention, I am washing my hands in between touching these plants because if I am touching something that has a fungal issue, I don't want to spread that fungus to my other plants. So there's this one. Let's move on to the next. Now I showed this hydrangea in my deadhead video and the issues I've been having. It's been a couple days and it doesn't seem to have gotten worse, the issues that I'm seeing. So I'm hoping hey, that's a good sign. Um, but again, the white powder here is a sign that it's likely mildew on these leaves. So I'm now on a weekly regimen of spraying these as well. I did read that any of the leaves that look like they might have mildew or fungus, you should remove them. If I do that on this plant, it'd be almost all of the leaves. So let me know if I should be removing some of these or if treating it and trying to stop the spread is enough. Also let me know if I just need to get rid of any of these plants, even though that would break my heart, but it would be okay. Um, but yeah, you can see here there's the white powder on almost all of the leaves. Now this is the only hydrangea I've noticed it on, but as soon as I noticed it, I've started spraying all of my other, not even just hydrangeas, but all of my other plants here, especially my rose. Now the other plant where I'm noticing issues is this rhubarb, and this is another potential heartbreaker. So if you see here, there is red starting to appear on the edges of the leaves. I have two rhubarb plants. The other one looks perfectly fine so far, um, but from, again, what I've been seeing online, it's likely a fungal issue. And it also said I might just have to get rid of the plant, which because rhubarb takes multiple years before you can actually start harvesting a lot of it, I think I just planted it last year, started it from seed last year. It would make me sad to have to start from seed again, but I'll do it if I must. So let me know if you have any experience with fungal issues on rhubarb and if this plant really is going to have to be completely removed. So let me talk a little bit about what I've been doing so far. And the first one is definitely paying attention to hygiene. So cleaning my tools, cleaning my hands in between touching any of the plants. I actually use my bare hands instead of my gloves because it's much easier to wash my hands than it is to throw my gloves in the wash in between every plant. So for me, that just makes it a little easier. Um, I clean my tools with alcohol wipes, so that's what I use in between the plants as well. And then any leaves that I remove that I think have fungal issues or any sort of issues, they go directly into the garbage. So make sure you aren't either leaving those on the ground or in the soil next to your plants or that you are not composting them. So those all go straight into the trash can, which is why I have a trash can up here. Uh, something else I've been doing is any of the plants where I notice an issue, I move it away from other plants or at least as far away as I can. I don't have a ton of space out here to move it. I've been thinking about potentially moving some of these over to the back deck, um, but I also have plants over there. But I at least make sure that the leaves of any of the infected plants aren't touching the leaves of another plant. I also make sure as I'm walking by that I don't brush my clothes up against them just in case I spread it that way. But I mean, these diseases can spread with the wind. So I don't know how effective it'll be, but at least give it a little bit of space from other plants and hopefully increase the airflow that way. Um, now, let me talk about some of the products that I've been using so far. And again, let me know if you have other recommendations. Um, let me know, I know there's a lot of like homemade sprays that you can make, which I'm hoping that I have those products on hand. So if you have any homemade remedies, let me know as well. Um, but this is what I've been using the most often because it is the fungal issues that I'm noticing right now. So this is from Bonide. It's the neem oil fungicide, but it's also a miticide and insecticide. Um, so this one I'm using on anything where I think there is fungal issues, kind of going on a seven to 10 day in between each round. Again, I'm using this on not only the plants that have an issue, but all of the plants <laughs> in general that I'm spraying. So I know I need to get more of this. I use this last year, but again, I didn't really use it preventatively. I started to use it once I saw an issue. And some of the plants, it seemed to help. Some of the plants I think were too far gone by the time that I realized there was an issue, especially my hydrangea. So I should probably remember that for next year. Um, so yeah, I've been using the neem oil for that. That also works with insects. So I'm hoping that's some prevention there as well. 
For any of the plants, like my eggplant, where I don't see any fungal issues, but I think there might be a pest issue, I'm using the Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. This is also what I use on my petunias preventatively as well. I don't know exactly how well it did with the budworms because I feel like, well, again, I wasn't as preventative as I could have been, but I feel like the budworms were still there anyway. I know that there's some products that work, but not necessarily for caterpillars or certain types of worms like that. So I don't know if this is incredibly effective. I feel like what was most effective last year was just hand picking off all the budworms, but any pest issues, this is typically what I turn to. Then lastly, this is what I'm using to fertilize because this is kind of the only all purpose granular plant food that I have. So this is the plant tone from Spoma. Now I do have some other, like I have an acidifier that has fertilizer in it. I have a citrus specific fertilizer. So I'm using those for the plants that like those kind of applications, but everything else that just kind of in general, I'm using the plant tone. I need to get something else, whether it's more plant tone or some other granular fertilizer, especially if we're going to continue to get as much rain as we've been having. So let me know if you have any recommendations as far as granular fertilizers in the garden. I'm also probably going to pick up some more compost as well, but it's been interesting. I feel like this year trying to balance out all of my maintenance with the weather that we've been having, making sure I'm feeding my plants, but also not applying too much liquid to damage the root system. So it's all about balance in the garden. I also want to mention with these two sprays, I used them last year, so I know that they work on my plants, but before you try anything, no matter how safe you think it's going to be, do a test spray. So spray on a leaf, wait for 24, 48 hours, see how your plant does. Last year I got, I can't even remember what spray it was, but it was something that I think was supposed to help with the budworms, and I sprayed it on a part of my supertunias, and everything turned white. So all the blooms turned white, so did the leaves lost a little bit of color. So I knew I didn't want to spray that all over my plant. So definitely do a test spray of anything that you're gonna use in your garden so you don't damage your garden when you're trying to fix it. Um, other things that I'm gonna do kind of differently going forward, but also for next year, um, I'm keeping a journal now of when I start to notice these issues. Um, this was a recommendation from, is it Gary Pilark? I think that's his last name on YouTube. There were two really helpful videos um, when I was looking up fungal issues that I'll link down below and his was one of them and basically said, write down when these issues occur so that next year you can start a treatment for prevention before they happen. So last year I knew that we had a lot of rain and I was getting fungal issues. So I should have learned for this year to be a bit more preventative. But again, it's not a widespread issue yet in the garden here. Um, what I'm also doing differently this year is setting a schedule. So I already have reminders in my calendar for like fertilizing or applying acidifier. I'm just adding another reminder in my calendar for doing the sprays as well. And that'll help keep me organized and remember when I need to do each of these applications. So that's gonna be everything for today's video. I hope it's a little bit helpful to see some of the issues I'm having, even if I don't know 100% what they are, um, but at least to know that one, it's normal to have these issues in your garden and some of the things you can do about them. Also, definitely let me know in the comments below if you are more certain than I am of what some of these issues might be, any treatments that you recommend, and then also if I have to completely get rid of my rhubarb plant or not. Um, but other than that, I think that's everything for today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.